Question 1. What are the key legal differences between a real estate agent and a real estate broker in Texas? A. Only brokers can own real estate firms. B. Agents require more education than brokers. C. Brokers cannot sell property. D. Agents have more legal responsibilities than brokers. Answer. A. Only brokers can own real estate firms. Explanation. In Texas, the key legal difference is that only real estate brokers can own and manage real estate firms, while agents must work under brokers. Question 2. In Texas, what is the maximum number of days a landlord has to return a security deposit after a tenant moves out? A. 30 days. B. 60 days. C. 45 days. D. 90 days. Answer. A. 30 days. Explanation. In Texas, a landlord has a maximum of 30 days to return a tenant's security deposit after they move out. Question 3. Define the term community property as it applies in Texas real estate law. A. Property acquired by either spouse during marriage. B. Property owned jointly by married couples. C. Property purchased for community use. D. Property inherited by spouses. Answer. A. Property acquired by either spouse during marriage. Explanation. In Texas, community property refers to property acquired by either spouse during the marriage, excluding inheritances and gifts. Question 4. What is the primary purpose of the Texas Real Estate Commission, TREC? A. To finance real estate transactions. B. To oversee and regulate the real estate profession in Texas. C. To sell state-owned real estate. D. To provide legal advice to real estate agents. Answer. B. To oversee and regulate the real estate profession in Texas. Explanation. The primary purpose of TREC is to oversee and regulate the real estate profession in Texas, ensuring compliance with laws and protecting consumers. Question 5. Describe the concept of homestead exemption in Texas property law. A. Tax exemption for first-time homebuyers. B. Protection from forced sale to satisfy debts. C. Exemption from all property taxes. D. Reduced mortgage rates for homeowners. Answer. B. Protection from forced sale to satisfy debts. Explanation. The homestead exemption in Texas law provides homeowners with protection from forced sale of their home to satisfy certain types of debts. Question 6. Scenario. A Texas property owner discovers an ancient artifact on their land. What laws govern the ownership of such finds in Texas? A. Federal Antiquities Laws. B. Texas Treasure Act. C. Landowners' Personal Property Rights. D. Texas Historical Commission Regulations. Answer. B. Texas Treasure Act. Explanation. The Texas Treasure Act governs the ownership of ancient artifacts found on private property in Texas, typically requiring reporting to the state. Question 7. Explain the legal implications of a mechanics lien in Texas. A. It allows a tenant to break a lease early. B. It gives creditors rights to a debtor's property. C. It grants mechanics ownership of repaired vehicles. D. It secures payment for construction or repair work on property. Answer. D. It secures payment for construction or repair work on property. Explanation. A mechanics lien in Texas is a legal tool that secures payment for contractors or repair professionals who have performed work on a property. Question 8. In Texas, what disclosures are legally required when selling a residential property? A. Only disclosures about natural disasters. B. Disclosures about property defects and hazards. C. Financial status of the seller. D. Future development plans for the area. Answer. B. Disclosures about property defects and hazards. Explanation. Texas law requires sellers to disclose known defects and hazards about the property being sold. Question 9. Define option period in Texas real estate transactions. A. Time to secure financing. B. 
buyer's time to conduct due diligence. C. Grace period for contract termination. D. Seller's time to accept an offer. Answer. B. Buyer's time to conduct due diligence. Explanation. The option period in Texas allows buyers a specified time to conduct due diligence, such as inspections, before finalizing the purchase. Question 10. What are the implications of Texas being a non-disclosure state in real estate transactions? A. Sales prices of homes are not publicly disclosed. B. Property defects do not need to be disclosed. C. Agents are not required to disclose commission rates. D. Mortgage terms are kept confidential. Answer. A. Sales prices of homes are not publicly disclosed. Explanation. In Texas, being a non-disclosure state means the sales price of homes is not required to be publicly disclosed or recorded. Question 11. Explain the role of a title company in a real estate transaction in Texas. A. To provide mortgage loans. B. To ensure the property title is valid and transferable. C. To appraise the property value. D. To negotiate the sales contract. Answer. B. To ensure the property title is valid and transferable. Explanation. A title company in Texas plays a crucial role in ensuring that the property title is clear, valid, and free from lines or disputes before the transaction. Question 12. What is the Deceptive Trade Practices Act, DTPA? And how does it apply to real estate in Texas? A. It regulates trade practices in the stock market. B. It protects consumers from fraud in real estate transactions. C. It governs international trade agreements. D. It sets standards for construction materials. Answer. B. It protects consumers from fraud in real estate transactions. Explanation. The DTPA in Texas is designed to protect consumers, including in real estate transactions, from false, misleading, or deceptive business practices. Question 13. Scenario. A buyer in Texas wants to purchase a property with an existing lease. How does this affect the buyer's rights as a landlord? A. The lease is terminated upon sale. B. The buyer must renegotiate the lease terms. C. The buyer inherits the lease under its current terms. D. The buyer cannot become the landlord until the lease expires. Answer. C. The buyer inherits the lease under its current terms. Explanation. In Texas, when a property is sold with an existing lease, the buyer inherits the lease and becomes the landlord under the existing lease terms. Question 14. What is the Texas Homestead Law and how does it protect homeowners? A. It prevents foreclosures. B. It limits property tax increases. C. It protects a portion of a home's value from creditors. D. It provides insurance discounts. Answer. C. It protects a portion of a home's value from creditors. Explanation. The Texas Homestead Law protects homeowners by exempting a portion of their home's value from certain creditors, safeguarding it from forced sale. Question 15. Define buyer's representation agreement in the context of Texas real estate. A. A contract between buyer and seller. B. An agreement outlining the buyer's budget. C. A contract between a buyer and a real estate agent. D. An agreement for a property inspection. Answer. C. A contract between a buyer and a real estate agent. Explanation. A buyer's representation agreement in Texas is a contract where a buyer agrees to work exclusively with a real estate agent for the purchase of property. Question 16. What are the legal responsibilities of a real estate agent in Texas when representing a seller? A. To obtain the highest offer. B. To disclose the seller's financial information. C. To ensure the buyer is qualified. D. To act in the seller's best interest and disclose material facts. Answer. D. To act in the seller's best interest and disclose material facts. Explanation. In Texas, 
a real estate agent representing a seller has the legal responsibility to act in the seller's best interest and disclose all material facts about the property. Question 17. Scenario. A commercial property in Texas has been found to violate ADA compliance. What steps must the owner take? A. Demolish the property. B. Sell the property. C. Make necessary modifications for ADA compliance. D. Pay a fine to the ADA. Answer. C. Make necessary modifications for ADA compliance. Explanation. If a commercial property in Texas violates ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, compliance the owner is required to make necessary modifications to meet ADA standards. Question 18. Explain the concept of earnest money in Texas real estate transactions. A. A refundable deposit for property viewing. B. A fee paid to the real estate agent. C. A down payment on the mortgage. D. A deposit showing the buyer's serious intent. Answer. D. A deposit showing the buyer's serious intent. Explanation. Earnest money in Texas is a deposit made by a buyer to demonstrate serious intent to purchase a property held in escrow until closing. Question 19. What is the significance of community reinvestment areas in Texas? A. Areas designated for commercial development. B. Regions exempt from property taxes. C. Areas targeted for economic development and revitalization. D. Zones reserved for community services. Answer. C. Areas targeted for economic development and revitalization. Explanation. Community reinvestment areas in Texas are designated regions targeted for economic development, revitalization, and increased investment in housing and infrastructure. Question 20. Scenario. A Texas homeowner wants to contest their property tax assessment. What is the process for this? A. Filing a lawsuit in court. B. Direct negotiation with the tax authority. C. Filing an appeal with the local appraisal district review board. D. Paying a fee to reduce the assessment. Answer. C. Filing an appeal with the local appraisal district review board. Explanation. In Texas, to contest a property tax assessment, a homeowner must file an appeal with the local appraisal district review board, following specific procedures and timelines. Question 21. How does Texas law treat the concept of dual agency in real estate transactions? A. It's strictly prohibited. B. It's allowed with written consent from all parties. C. It's encouraged for efficiency. D. It's only allowed in commercial transactions. Answer. B. It's allowed with written consent from all parties. Explanation. Texas law allows dual agency in real estate transactions, but it requires the written consent of all parties involved, ensuring full disclosure and agreement. Question 22. What is the statute of frauds in Texas, and how does it relate to real estate? A. A law requiring all fraud to be reported within 48 hours. B. A regulation on real estate advertising. C. A law requiring certain contracts, including real estate, to be in writing. D. A guideline for resolving real estate disputes. Answer. C. A law requiring certain contracts, including real estate, to be in writing. Explanation. The statute of frauds in Texas is a law that requires certain types of contracts, including those related to real estate, to be in writing to be legally enforceable. Question 23. Scenario. In Texas, a buyer discovers undisclosed flooding issues after purchasing a home. What legal recourse is available? A. File a complaint with the Texas Real Estate Commission. B. Sue the seller for breach of contract. C. Request a property tax reassessment. D. Apply for federal disaster relief funds. Answer. B. Sue the seller for breach of contract. Explanation. If a buyer in Texas discovers undisclosed flooding issues after a purchase, they may have legal recourse to sue the seller for breach of contract or non-disclosure, depending on the circumstances. Question 24. 
define abstract of title in the context of Texas real estate. A. A summary of a property's legal history. B. A creative description of a property. C. The title deed abstracted for brevity. D. An artistic representation of property boundaries. Answer. A. A summary of a property's legal history. Explanation. An abstract of title in Texas real estate is a comprehensive summary that documents the legal history and ownership of a property. Question 25. What are the requirements for a valid real estate contract in Texas? A. Verbal agreement between buyer and seller. B. Signature of a real estate agent. C. Written agreement with signatures of all parties involved. D. Approval from the Texas Real Estate Commission. Answer. C. Written agreement with signatures of all parties involved. Explanation. For a real estate contract to be valid in Texas, it must be in writing and include the signatures of all parties involved in the transaction. Question 26. Explain the difference between joint tenancy and tenancy in common under Texas law. A. Joint tenancy requires marriage. Tenancy in common does not. B. Joint tenancy includes right of survivorship. Tenancy in common does not. C. Tenancy in common allows for unequal ownership shares. Joint tenancy does not. D, B, and C. Answer. D, B, and C. Explanation. Under Texas law, joint tenancy includes the right of survivorship and requires equal ownership, while tenancy in common does not include survivorship rights and allows for unequal ownership shares. Question 27. Scenario. A Texas real estate agent is accused of practicing without a license. What are the potential consequences? A. Mandatory continuing education. B. A warning and probation period. C. Fines and possible criminal charges. D. Automatic license suspension for one year. Answer. C. Fines and possible criminal charges. Explanation. Practicing real estate without a license in Texas can lead to serious consequences, including fines and potential criminal charges. Question 28. How does Texas law address the issue of lead-based paint in real estate transactions? A. Sellers must remove all lead-based paint before selling. B. Mandatory disclosure of lead-based paint for homes built before 1978. C. Lead-based paint testing for all real estate transactions. D. No specific requirements regarding lead-based paint. Answer. B. Mandatory disclosure of lead-based paint for homes built before 1978. Explanation. In Texas, sellers are required to disclose the presence of lead-based paint if the home was built before 1978 in accordance with federal law. Question 29. What is the Texas Veterans Land Board, VALB, and how does it impact real estate? A. A board that manages state parks. B. A regulatory body for commercial real estate. C. A program offering land and home loan benefits to veterans. D. A committee for urban development. Answer. C. A program offering land and home loan benefits to veterans. Explanation. The Texas Veterans Land Board, VLB, provides veterans with benefits for land purchases, home loans, and home improvements, aiding them in real estate transactions. Question 30. Describe the purpose and process of a 1031 exchange in Texas real estate. A. A method for immediate property ownership transfer. B. A process for exchanging investment properties to defer capital gains taxes. C. A platform for real estate agents to exchange properties. D. A system for converting residential properties to commercial use. Answer. B. A process for exchanging investment properties to defer capital gains taxes. Explanation. A 1031 exchange in Texas real estate allows investors to exchange like-kind properties and defer paying capital gains taxes on the sale.
Question 31. Scenario. A property in Texas is being sold with an easement. How does this affect the property's use and value? A. The easement voids the property sale. B. It typically increases the property's value. C. It may restrict certain uses of the property and affect its value. D. Easements are not legally binding in Texas. Answer. C. It may restrict certain uses of the property and affect its value. Explanation. Selling a property with an easement in Texas can impact its use as easements grant certain rights to others over the property, and this can also affect the property's value. Question 32. Define marketable title in Texas real estate. A. The most popular type of property title. B. A title free from significant defects or disputes. C. A title with the highest market value. D. A title marketed by real estate agents. Answer. B. A title free from significant defects or disputes. Explanation. A marketable title in Texas real estate is a title that is clear, free from significant defects, lines, or disputes, making it more attractive to buyers. Question 33. What are the specific requirements for disclosing deaths on a property in Texas? A. Deaths must always be disclosed. B. Only deaths due to property defects must be disclosed. C. Deaths from natural causes or accidents unrelated to the property don't need disclosure. D. No requirement to disclose any deaths. Answer. C. Deaths from natural causes or accidents unrelated to the property don't need disclosure. Explanation. In Texas, there's no requirement to disclose deaths that occurred on the property from natural causes, accidents unrelated to the condition of the property, or suicides. Question 34. Scenario. A tenant in Texas breaks a lease early. What are the landlord's rights and obligations? A. The landlord can keep the security deposit. B. The landlord must find a new tenant as soon as possible. C. The landlord can immediately re-rent the property without notice. D. The landlord has no obligations. Answer. B. The landlord must find a new tenant as soon as possible. Explanation. In Texas, if a tenant breaks a lease early, the landlord is obliged to make a reasonable effort to re-rent the property to mitigate damages. Question 35. Explain the concept of seller's disclosure in Texas real estate law. A. A financial statement from the seller. B. A document where the seller discloses known property defects. C. A list of all previous property owners. D. A disclosure of the seller's future real estate plans. Answer. B. A document where the seller discloses known property defects. Explanation. Seller's disclosure in Texas real estate law involves a document where the seller is required to disclose any known defects or issues with the property. Question 36. What is the Texas Property Code stance on fair housing? A. It prohibits discrimination in housing based on specific protected classes. B. It only applies to public housing. C. It allows landlords to select tenants at their discretion. D. It sets rent control standards. Answer. A. It prohibits discrimination in housing based on specific protected classes. Explanation. The Texas Property Code aligns with federal law in prohibiting discrimination in housing based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, or disability. Question 37. Scenario. A Texas homeowner wants to convert their residence into a short-term rental. What legal considerations apply? A. No specific legal considerations are necessary. B. They must obtain a commercial property license. C. Compliance with local zoning laws and possibly obtaining a permit. D. Immediate conversion without any approvals. Answer. C. Compliance with local zoning laws and possibly obtaining a permit. Explanation. In Texas, Converting a residence into a short-term rental may require compliance with local zoning laws and regulations, and in some cases, obtaining a permit or license. Question 38. 
How do the Texas statutes define and regulate real estate advertising? A. No regulations on real estate advertising. B. Advertising must be truthful and not misleading. C. All advertising must be approved by TRDC. D. Only licensed agents can advertise real estate. Answer B. Advertising must be truthful and not misleading. Explanation. Texas statutes require that real estate advertising be honest, truthful, and not misleading, ensuring consumers are not deceived. Question 39. Define procuring cause in Texas real estate. A. The underlying reason for a property's value. B. The main cause of property disputes. C. The agent's role in bringing about a sale. D. The legal cause for contract termination. Answer. C. The agent's role in bringing about a sale. Explanation. In Texas real estate, procuring cause refers to the actions of an agent that directly lead to the successful sale or purchase of a property. Question 40. Scenario. A real estate transaction in Texas falls through due to undisclosed property defects. What legal actions can the buyer pursue? A. No legal actions as all sales are final. B. Sue for breach of contract or misrepresentation. C. Request a refund from TERDC. D. File a complaint with the local real estate association. Answer. B. Sue for breach of contract or misrepresentation. Explanation. If a real estate transaction in Texas fails due to undisclosed defects, the buyer may have grounds to sue the seller for breach of contract or misrepresentation. Question 41. What is the significance of a survey in a Texas real estate transaction? A. It determines the property's market value. B. It verifies the property's legal description and boundaries. C. It assesses the property's environmental impact. D. It rates the property's neighborhood. Answer. B. It verifies the property's legal description and boundaries. Explanation. In a Texas real estate transaction, a survey is significant as it verifies the property's legal description and boundaries, ensuring accuracy in the representation of the property's physical limits. Question 42. Define subagent in the context of Texas real estate. A. An agent representing the interests of the buyer. B. An agent working under another agent, representing the seller's interests. C. A secondary agent responsible for closing transactions. D. An agent representing both buyer and seller. Answer. B. An agent working under another agent, representing the seller's interests. Explanation. A subagent in Texas real estate is an agent who works under the direction of another agent and represents the interests of the seller, not the buyer. Question 43. Scenario. A Texas landlord wants to evict a tenant for non-payment of rent. What legal steps must they follow? A. Immediate eviction without notice. B. Providing a written notice with a chance to pay or vacate. C. Withholding the security deposit as the only action. D. Informing the local housing authority and awaiting approval. Answer. B. Providing a written notice with a chance to pay or vacate. Explanation. In Texas, a landlord must provide a tenant with a written notice to vacate, giving them the opportunity to pay the overdue rent or vacate the property before proceeding with an eviction lawsuit. Question 44. When is a Texas residential service contract, and when is it used in real estate transactions? A. A contract for residential leasing. B. A warranty service for home appliances and systems. C. A contract for residential property management. D. An agreement for exclusive listing services. Answer. B. A warranty service for home appliances and systems. Explanation. In Texas real estate, a residential service contract is a home warranty service that covers the repair or replacement of home appliances and systems, often used to add value to a real estate transaction. Question 45. Scenario. A real estate development in Texas is found to impact a protected wildlife habitat. 
What environmental regulations must be considered? A. Only local municipal codes. B. The Endangered Species Act and other relevant environmental laws. C. Regulations related to building aesthetics. D. There are no specific regulations for wildlife habitats. Answer B. The Endangered Species Act and other relevant environmental laws. Explanation. In Texas, real estate developments impacting a protected wildlife habitat must consider the Endangered Species Act and other state and federal environmental regulations to ensure the protection of the habitat. Question 46. Explain right of first refusal in Texas property law. A. The right to purchase property before it's offered to others. B. The first opportunity to refuse a property during a transaction. C. A tenant's right to refuse rental increases. D. The right to be the first to view a property for sale. Answer. A. The right to purchase property before it's offered to others. Explanation. In Texas, the right of first refusal is a contractual right that gives an individual or entity the opportunity to purchase a property before the owner can offer it to other potential buyers. Question 47. What are the legal implications of commingling funds in Texas real estate practice? A. It is encouraged for efficient transactions. B. It leads to automatic revocation of a real estate license. C. It can result in legal and ethical violations for mixing client and personal funds. D. There are no specific implications in Texas. Answer. C. It can result in legal and ethical violations for mixing client and personal funds. Explanation. Commingling funds or mixing client funds with personal or business funds can lead to serious legal and ethical violations in Texas real estate practice. Question 48. Scenario. A Texas real estate agent inadvertently discloses confidential information about a client. What are the potential ethical and legal ramifications? A. Mandatory ethics training. B. Possible legal action for breach of confidentiality and professional discipline. C. No ramifications as the disclosure was inadvertent. D. A fine paid to the Texas Real Estate Commission. Answer. B. Possible legal action for breach of confidentiality and professional discipline. Explanation. Inadvertent disclosure of confidential information by a real estate agent in Texas can lead to legal action for breach of confidentiality and professional discipline, including sanctions from the Texas Real Estate Commission. Question 49. Define the term lion priority in Texas real estate. A. The order in which lions are paid off during a sale. B. The importance of a lion based on its amount. C. The chronological order of lion placement. D. The priority of property lines over other debts. Answer. A. The order in which lines are paid off during a sale. Explanation. Lion priority in Texas real estate refers to the order in which lines on a property are paid off during a sale, typically determined by the chronological order of their recording. Question 50. How does Texas law address boundary disputes between neighboring properties? A. Through mandatory arbitration only. B. By the immediate involvement of local authorities. C. By allowing courts to determine property boundaries. D. Boundary disputes are considered civil matters and not governed by law. Answer. C. By allowing courts to determine property boundaries. Explanation. In Texas, boundary disputes between neighboring properties are often resolved in court, where a judge can determine the legal property boundaries based on evidence. Question 51. Scenario. After closing a property sale in Texas, undisclosed termite damage is discovered. What are the buyer's options? A. The buyer has no recourse after closing. B. Pursue legal action for non-disclosure against the seller. C. Apply for a state-funded repair grant. D. Request a refund from the Texas Real Estate Commission. Answer. B. Pursue legal action for non-disclosure against the seller. Explanation. If undisclosed termite damage is discovered after closing a property sale in Texas,
the buyer may pursue legal action against the seller for non-disclosure or misrepresentation. Question 52. What constitutes illegal steering in the context of Texas real estate? A. Directing clients to or away from properties based on protected characteristics. B. Steering negotiations in favor of the seller. C. Advising clients on the best financial lenders. D. Choosing properties in specific school districts. Answer. A. Directing clients to or away from properties based on protected characteristics. Explanation. Illegal steering in Texas real estate involves directing clients towards or away from certain neighborhoods or properties based on race, religion, or other protected characteristics, which violates fair housing laws. Question 53. Explain the concept of condemnation and how it applies to Texas real estate. A. The process of declaring a property uninhabitable. B. Government acquisition of private property for public use. C. The act of publicly criticizing a property. D. Declaring a property free of all lions. Answer. B. Government acquisition of private property for public use. Explanation. Condemnation in Texas real estate refers to the process by which the government acquires private property for public use, often involving compensation to the property owner. Question 54. Scenario. A Texas homeowner wants to challenge a zoning decision affecting their property. What is the process? A. Direct appeal to the state government. B. Filing a lawsuit in federal court. C. Requesting a review or appeal with the local zoning board. D. Petitioning the neighbors for support. Answer. C. Requesting a review or appeal with the local zoning board. Explanation. To challenge a zoning decision in Texas, a homeowner should request a review or appeal with the local zoning board, following the procedures set by the municipality. Question 55. What are the differences between real property and personal property in Texas law? A. Real property is immovable, like land and buildings. Personal property is movable. B. There is no legal difference in Texas. C. Real property includes vehicles. Personal property includes homes. D. Personal property is taxed. Real property is not. Answer. A. Real property is immovable, like land and buildings. Personal property is movable. Explanation. In Texas law, real property refers to immovable property, such as land and buildings, while personal property includes movable items like furniture and vehicles. Question 56. Scenario. In Texas, a real estate contract is breached. What remedies are available to the non-breaching party? A. Only monetary damages. B. Specific performance, monetary damages, or cancellation. C. Mandatory mediation only. D. The contract is automatically void. Answer. B. Specific performance, monetary damages, or cancellation. Explanation. If a real estate contract is breached in Texas, the non-breaching party may seek various remedies, including specific performance, enforcing the terms of the contract, monetary damages, or cancellation of the contract. Question 57. Define mosury and its implications in Texas real estate financing. A. Charging an illegally high interest rate on loans. B. Undervaluing a property for financial gain. C. Failing to disclose financial information in a transaction. D. The practice of unlicensed mortgage lending. Answer. A. Charging an illegally high interest rate on loans. Explanation. Usury in Texas real estate financing refers to the practice of charging an interest rate on loans that exceeds the legal limit set by state law, which can lead to legal penalties. Question 58. What are the requirements for obtaining a real estate license in Texas? A. Completion of a specific number of real estate courses and passing a state exam. B. A bachelor's degree in real estate. C. Membership in a national real estate organization. D. At least five years of experience in property management. Answer. A. 
completion of a specific number of real estate courses, and passing a state exam. Explanation. To obtain a real estate license in Texas, individuals must complete a required number of real estate education courses and pass the state licensing exam. Question 59. Scenario. A Texas property is sold with undisclosed easements. What recourse does the new owner have? A. The easements are void after the sale. B. Legal action for non-disclosure against the seller. C. Requesting removal of the easements from the local government. D. No recourse is available. Answer. B. Legal action for non-disclosure against the seller. Explanation. If a property in Texas is sold with undisclosed easements, the new owner may have the option to pursue legal action against the seller for failing to disclose the easements during the transaction. Question 60. Explain the role of the Federal Fair Housing Act and how it affects real estate practices in Texas. A. It only applies to federally funded housing projects. B. It prohibits discrimination in housing based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, or disability. C. It governs housing loan interest rates. D. It sets construction standards for residential properties. Answer. B. It prohibits discrimination in housing based on race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, or disability. Explanation. The Federal Fair Housing Act plays a crucial role in Texas real estate by prohibiting discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on specific protected classes.